Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So in this video, we're going to solve cheapest flights within K stops. Now, what does the problem state? There are N cities and M edges connected by some number of flights. You're given an array of flights where flights, I mean from to price, which means you can fly from the city, uh, from to city uh, to with a cost price of this. You're also given three integers, source, destination and K. You have to return the cheapest price from source to destination with at most k stops. If there is no such route, return minus one. Now, this is one of my most favorite algorithms. Why? Because this is the algorithm which is implemented on a large scale on a number of websites. Okay. So, cheapest flight within k stops. So, what does the problem state? Imagine this is the uh, flight paths. I'm saying in order to fly, uh, fly from zero to the city one, the cost is hundred. In order to fly from the city two to city zero, the cost is hundred. One to city two, the cost is hundred. Uh, one to city three, the cost is six hundred. Two to city three, the cost is two hundred. Okay. Now a customer comes up and says, "Hey, I want to fly from the city zero. Okay, I want to reach the destination three. So from here to here, but I do not want to take a lot of stops." But at max, yes, at max, I can take one stop. I can fly directly or at max, I can take one stop. Okay. Now, are there any direct flights to this? I don't see. Let's see if there are any flights with stop one. So one and then one. So if I take this route, I have to stop at the city one and the cost will be 700, correct? Because 100 to fly from zero to city one and 600 to fly from city one to city three, correct? Now, the question comes, can we have any other path with one stop? And the answer to that is no. Any path we take will not end up at city three. So there can be another path, which is from here to here, then to here, which will cost me 100 plus 100, 200 plus 200, which is 400, which is cheapest. Yes. But the customer says, no, at max, I can fly one, like I can stop at one stop, not more than that. If I take this path, it ends up stopping at city one and city two, and the customer does not have that much of time. Got it? Now, you might be thinking, what is a big deal in it? Let's apply a simple dextra, and that should give our answer. So what I'll do is, I'll take a test case and try to apply a simple dextra, and I will eventually explain you why a simple dextra will fail. But let's take a test case and try to implement a simple dextra where we start from a given source node. We use a priority queue. We use a distance array. By the way, if you do not know dextra's algorithm, I've already made a lot of videos on it. Go back in the series and watch it. Okay. And then come back and watch this. Do not jump in between. Then you'll be like, I don't understand. I am assuming you have seen the previous video in the series. Then only I'm explaining this problem. Assuming that you already know what I have taught what I've taught in the previous videos. Okay. Okay. So I'm assuming, you know, Dijkstra's algorithm. So we will be taking this particular graph sources given as zero distance, uh, sorry, destination is given as two and at maximum you're allowed two stops, nothing more than two stops. Remember one thing, if you're traveling something like this, these two are considered stops. The end point or the starting point is not considered as a stop. Keep that in your mind. The middle points are the ones which are considered as stops. Okay. So we're given the source, we're given the destination and we're given the K equal to two. So what will we be given as the input? The input will be something like this. We'll be given zero, one, five. We'll be given zero, three, two, basically this edge, this edge will be given all the edges. So the step one is very simple. I'll say step one is to create the graph from the edges. And I've already taught you this in a lot of videos in the previous, like in this series. So please go back and watch it. So first step is very simple. Create the graph with the given edges. What is the next step? The next step is whatever is the source, go and mark it as zero. Yes, go ahead and mark it as zero. And we will be assigning a priority queue, which will be storing something. That's the generic way, which will be storing something like a distance, a node and a stops. And we'll try to apply it and see why will it fail. Okay. Very simple because that's the, uh, that's the first intuition that should come to my brain, that priority queue. So I mean like distance is zero, the node is zero and initially I haven't taken any stops. So zero comma zero comma zero, right? Now what I'll do is I'll start iterating on the priority queue. And that's the first thing So I'll be like, okay, distance till now zero, 
note is zero and stop still now taken is zero, right? Now, can I say from zero, where can I move? I can move to one or I can move to three. These are the two possible places I can move. So if I decide to move to one, I'll cost plus five, which will make me a total cost of five. And can I say the stops will be one because this is the stop where I am going to. So the stops will increase by one and the distance will be added by the cost that it takes to fly from zero to one. Very simple. Now we look at one. It is saying that previously I could reach one with infinity. So I'll go to one and I'll say, can I please update this? So let's quickly update this and this will become cost five. I'll be like, okay, five comma. So let's quickly insert that into the priority queue. Five comma node one stop one inserted into the priority. Correct. Now what is the next thing? I can also go to the node three with a cost of plus two. So the total cost will be something like two now and the stops taken will be one. So can I say the new costing will be two because in order to reach three, I'm taking two cost. So two comma three comma one step. That's it. Do uh, does zero have any other adjacent cities to fly to? No, it just had a couple of adjacent cities to fly to. You can figure that out from the adjacency list. So now I'll quickly erase this off. Let's erase this off. I will erase that off. Now priority queue will say, hey, listen, I'm a minimum heap. So which one will be at the top? This one, because that's the minimum. So I'm saying I'm going to take a cost of two. So I'm going to take a cost of two to reach the node three with a stop, one stop. Okay. And then I'll erase this from the priority queue. Let's quickly erase this from the priority queue. Now three will be like, where can I go? Three is like, I can go to one. Yes, I can go to one. Three will be like, let's go to one, which is the node one. And I'll take a plus two. So the total cost will become four. Why? Till now it was two. Now I'm taking plus two. So the cost will become four. And can I say I'll have one more stop? So the stop will become two. I'll definitely have one more stop. So the stop will become two. So apparently, as of now, can I say I have again reached the node one with a cost of two. Sorry, with a cost of four. So node one with a cost of four with stops two. I'll just put that into the priority queue and I'll update the one with saying I can reach you at a cost of four. Perfect. Now what I'll do is I'll just omit this off. Let's quickly omit this off. I've omitted this off. Now again, we'll go to the priority queue and we will see four is the minimum this time. So I'll take out four. So I'm like, okay, I can take a cost of four in order to reach a node one and with a number of stops as two. Remember, we were only allowed two stops. We were only allowed two stops. So after this, it has to be the destination. We cannot take any other thing. It has to be the destination. Got it? So what I'll do is I'll still go ahead. We can check about the destination afterwards, but we will still go ahead and see who are your adjacent nodes. It states one of my adjacent node is four. And it also states one of my adjacent node is two. So imagine it tries to go to the node two and takes a cost of five, which makes it a total cost of nine, which stops as three. Remember, three stops is still okay because this is the destination. We can go ahead. We can proceed. Okay. So we see something that stops we have exceeded. That's fine. The cost taken is nine. So I'll be like, fine. Where did I reach? That is the point of question. I'll be like, I reached node two with a cost of nine. So cost of nine, node two with stop three is what I'll put into the priority queue. Correct. And where else I can go? I can go to the node four. I can. And how much it will take? Plus one. So the total cost this time will be five in order to reach four. So again, I can update this to something like five comma four with a stop three, because that is what I'll take. Now you might be saying this is not the destination. You're taking a lot of step, a lot of stops. Okay. Let's put that into the priority queue. Do not think. Perfect. Allow me this. So this step is done. What's the next step? It will say who is the minimum in the priority queue. And the priority queue says I have a five, four, three, I have a nine, two, three, and I have a five, one, one. So five, one, one is the minimum. So I'll take it out. Five, one, one is the minimum. So five, sorry, cost of five in order to reach one with a stop one, because that's a straight path that it took. Correct. Now the point comes, you're standing at one. It says two is one of my adjacent and four is one of my adjacent. So if I try to go to two, the cost taken will be plus five and that will be a total cost of 10, right? And if you see at two, you have already reached two at a nine step. So this will not be considered, right? And over here, there's a four. Over here, there's a four. So I can try to go to four. I can try to go to four, 
but the cost then will be one more, which will be a cost of six. But the stops taken, very, very important. The stops taken will be two because previously the stop was one. I'm taking one more stop, so the stops is two. But, 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 you've already reached four. Yes, you've already reached four at a cost of five, which is this path. This is taking a larger cost. So, priority queue or the dexterous algorithm will say, I will not consider it, which is actually wrong. Which is actually wrong. Priority queue will say, I will not consider it. Because I already have reached till here at a costing of 5. I understand these are 3 stops. But in case it was not 3 stops. Just imagine that scenario. Like if K was more than that. It's like, I will not allow you because I have better. But it cannot move ahead. You need to understand. This part, which is storing 5 at 4. Can this move ahead? No, because it already has 3 stops. It cannot take the next journey. It cannot take the next journey because three stops must include the destination as well. But since I've taken this path, which is costing 2 plus 2 plus 1, which is 5, which is the minimal, it tends to say, I have a better, I have 5. I take 5 to reach 5, oh, sorry, 4. Why will I take this distance, which is costing me 6? So apparently, I will not consider this, which is a wrong which is a wrong direction. Why? Because this direction cannot go here. This is not possible because stops are, you're done with stops. But this is still possible. 5, 1 and 1, which is 7. This is still possible because just two stops. And that's allowed. Thereby, if you store everything in terms of distance, if you store everything in terms of distance, whenever you reach 2, that will be wrong. So what you have to do is, you have to store everything in terms of stops. Yes, you have to store everything in terms of stops. You'll be like, whenever I reach someone, that's fine. I will try to maintain this distance array. But this will not be my first priority of judgment. My first priority of judgment will be stops. And then I can just keep on comparing all the distances. I can keep on comparing and store it. Got it? Perfect. So this is where we will not implement something like a priority queue. Got it? So what I'll do is I'll quickly erase this and try to implement the algorithm that will be required to solve this problem. So I hope you have understood why cannot we implement the Dijkstra's algorithm because it might happen you have taken this journey and you have got something like a very small distance but you cannot move ahead. So this journey is of no use. Whereas someone else might take slightly more, but he can go ahead. That's why storing shortest distance will not work. Got it? So what I'll do is, I'll store stops, node, and distance. So, zero stops, source zero, distance zero, source marked as zero. So, I'm at node zero, which has taken a distance zero, stop is zero. Zero can go to one, which will cost him five. So 1 can be reached at a cost of 5. 1 can be reached at a cost of 5 with a stop 1. Stop 1, 1 can be reached at a cost of 5. Perfect. I can also go to 3, which is very obvious. I can go to 3 and I can go to 1. So if I go to 3, I'll cost plus 2, which will make me reach it in 2 cost. Stop 1, no 3 at a cost of 2. Perfect. Done. Omit this. Next. Predic you says, which is the minimum? Priority queue is like, I know which is the minimum stop. This one. Do we require a priority queue? We will talk about that as well. So, stop 1, node 1, distance 5. Where can 1 go? 1 can go to 4, 1 can go to 2. 1 can go to 4, 1 can go to 2. Okay? So, what it'll be like is, okay, fine. 1 can go to 4, right? And if it goes to 4, it'll take another plus 1, which will make it a total distance of 6. 4 can be reached at a distance of 6. Distance of 6, 4, and a stop 2. Very, very important because previously it was stop 1. So, plus 1 stop, stop 2. Nice. Next, it can also go to something like 2. And if it goes to 2, it will charge us another 5, which will make it a cost of 10. So, I can reach 2 at a cost of 10 and a stop of 2 stops. Perfect. So, I'll be like, stop 2, node 2, distance 10. Amazing. Next, I'll just go and erase it. Now, Pratiku says, who is the shortest distance? It says this. 
stop sorry which is short is stop stop one node three distance two perfect so i can go to one which will cost me another two so that will be yielding me a cost of five so i've already reached i've already reached one at a cost of five at a better at a better stops like taking consuming lesser number of stops will it make sense to consume more stops and reach at the same cost or more cost definitely not so not to be considered where can three go nowhere else three is done amazing next let's take it so this is done next two four six stops two i can say i'm at uh four and it has taken me six now four can, four can be like stops is two okay not not an issue four can only go to two and takes a one the cost will be updated to seven i got a better one seven okay but the stops taken is three fine that's the maximum we can allow because it might be the destination right so stops three node two cost of seven right and i can easily go and update two to seven and i've done this so this is done let's take the next guy what's the next guy the next guy is very simple two comma two comma ten so i'll take the next guy and be like two comma two comma ten so stops two and i'm like which is the node oh that's the destination i've reached no need to go beyond we've reached so no need to go to its adjacent next three comma two comma seven again we've reached it's kind of over because this is again the destination no more going forward so ultimately i can say i have reached and if you look at this two it's storing seven which is ultimately my minimum cost if i take at max of k stops at max of k stops and which is the path if i take somewhere around this path sorry my bad somewhere around this path rather which is this path which is taking seven somewhere around this this and this which is something like five one one and this path two stops why did we take one more stop because this is not a stop thereby inserting three is okay but do not go beyond three do not go beyond three. If you're inserting three, make sure it's the destination or do not go beyond at max three and all the distances can be stored because that's what we are allowed to do. Not more than that. Got it? Now the question arises, do you actually need a priority queue? Because what is the use of priority queue? It always tells me the sh shortest stops or the minimum stops. But do we require a priority queue? Because the stops are increasing by plus one. The distances are not something like plus four, plus six, plus seven. It's like, first you will always be at source at a stop zero and you take one step in all the direction to the adjacent cities. So stop one, stop one. Then you take adjacent cities, another plus one, plus one. So if you carefully see, it's like zero, one, one, two, three, three. It's increasing. So do you actually need a priority queue? No, because even if you take a queue data structure, the topmost guy will always be the guy with the shortest number of stops we've already done a similar problem in the uh, past in this series only right so i can say there's no need to take a priority queue because that adds an extra logarithmic thing i'll just take a queue and i know since the stops are increasing by plus one at every step it's constant the insti uh, the increase is constant if the increase is constant i don't need a priority queue since the increase is constant, the queue will make sure that it always gives me the shortest number of stops. So, so before moving on to the code, there's one thing to notice. Whenever we reach a destination, do not stop. Because in future, if you carefully see, we reach the destination over here. But going forward, we reach the same destination at a better price. Do not stop. Do not stop. And take the answer from here. Okay. And if this is marked as infinity, you cannot thereby minus one okay so guys i hope you have understood the entire explanation so it's time to code it up so as usual the c plus plus code is on the right and you can figure out the exact similar java code on the left so we're given uh, the number of nodes or the number of uh, airports and i given the all the flight informations first thing create the graph so i need to store uh, the adjacent nodes and the edge weights so we need a pair so just create it so auto of id let's go across to all the flights information and I can say, okay, there's an edge from this. Remember, it's a directed graph. So, IT of 1 and IT of 2 is the cost. 
the graph creation is done. Next thing, I can set queue. And in the queue, I need to store three things. So probably I can take a pair of int, comma pair, int, comma end, and this can be a queue. And what do I need to store? Queue dot push. So something like I, I need to store stops. Definitely, I need to store the source. I need to store the distance, which is the new one. Perfect. Next, I need to declare a distance array. So let's quickly declare a distance array of same size. Really, I can assign that to 1e9. Now, I know the distance till the source is 0. These things I definitely know. And at the end of the day, if the distance to the destination is still 1e9, that means we never reached and we can return a minus 1. Else, we can go ahead and return whatever distance it took. And in between, we can perform the dexterous algorithm. So let's go and perform. Over here, I can say auto of it equal to q dot front and at the same time i can say q dot pop now can i write the stops as it dot first i can so go ahead and write it and can i write uh, the node as it dot second dot first because this is how i'm storing if you see properly i'm storing it something like as stops and then a pair of node comma the distance that's how i'm storing okay so what will the distance or the cost will be it dot second dot second perfect but if the stops has exceeded the minimum number of stops given to us no need to go to any further adjacent cities and i'll just drop it over here i can say auto of item can be written as uh, adjacent of node okay and then i can say what is the adjacent node and it will be like first right and i can also say what is the edge weight and it'll be like it dot second is the adjacent node. But once you've got the edge weight, can I say cost plus EDW is what I'll take more to reach the adjacent node. And if that is lesser than standard dextron, then this and the stops taken till now is just K till now because I can take one more in order to reach the destination. Till now, if this is the case, can I say distance of adjacent node will update itself to cost plus EDW, which is the edge weight. And can I say the Q will be like, okay, fine. I've taken one more stops. That's what I take. And at the same time, can I say, I'll, I have reached the adjacent node. Yes. At the same time, can I say the cost is cost plus EDW? I can. And this is how the iteration will be done. And then you can return the answer. So I've compiled this and it is compiling. Now I'll quickly submit this and see if this is working fine. You see, uh, we have successfully submitted this particular problem. We can figure out the space complexity very easily, but what about the time complexity? So if you remember, the time complexity was E log V of Dextra's algorithm, but we are not using anything as a priority queue. So can we remove log V? Log V. Yes, I can. So can I say E is the total number of edges? That is, that is what the definition was in Dextra. I've already proved this in the previous video. Go and watch it. So what is E? Total number of edges? Or can I say it is nothing but this flights, if I just take it, flights dot size, because that is what the number of edges is. That's it. That is the time complexity. So guys, so guys, I hope I was able to explain you the entire algorithm and the explanation. So just in case I was, please, please, please make sure you like this video. And if you're new to our channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button right away. And if you haven't checked out our DP series and the SDG, the links are in the description. Let's meet in some other video. Tell them bye-bye. Take care. Whenever your heart is broken.